and welcome back to my channel so this is the second part of my Salesforce DX tutorial on this tutorial we're going to learn how to use the org development model for Salesforce DX basically this is uh, working on a sandbox or development org using Salesforce DX so on the last tutorial we installed VX Studio code and the Salesforce extension pack and the Salesforce CLI so those are the only requirements for this video. We don't need to enable uh, Dev Hub for now. So to get started, open the command palette or go to view and select command palette or shift control command P and select create project with manifest. It's going to ask you for a project template. Just say, just select the standard one, uh, give it a name. I'm going to call the project Brave Goat and it's going to ask me where it wants to create a project on my local directory. So I'm going to click create project. And the scaffolding here would be created. So the only difference here with the scratch org one with just create project, it has a manifest folder. Inside the manifest folder is a package XML. And the package XML has the default template, which has Apex class, Apex component, and all this stuff. So if you used to be working on older, on Force IDE before DX or maybe Smate or IntelliJ, um, you could have this uh, metadata um, structure over here. It would have a package XML as well. So if you have an existing product, a project you could copy this uh, package XML and replace it with this one and that will work the same um, but for now I'm gonna stick with the standard template so once you have this you will notice the force dash app folder is empty so what's going to do is gonna retrieve this metadata from sandbox and convert it to the DX format so open up the comment uh, palette again and we need to authorize an org so the org that we're going to authorize here is the either the sandbox or the development org so I have an org named brave goat as well so I'm gonna open that I'm gonna authenticate And let's open this. So you would know you're authenticated by looking at the bottom section here. The bottom left, you would see shows um, the org that uh, you're connected on. So I'm just going to open the terminal as well so you can see. Um, next thing to do is retrieve the package. So you just right click on the package XML and say retrieve source in manifest from org. So this is going to run this um, command sfdx for source retrieve dash dash manifest and the let's wait for this but the, this is the direct the path to the package xml so it went to the org and retrieve all of this stuff so let's open the force uh, app now and you would see that this should be populated so so let's uh, edit the class, uh, utility class. I'm just going to put a comment for now. And I'm going to say SFDX uh, YouTube tutorial. I'm going to hit save. As you notice, hitting save didn't do anything. I have to right click on the class and say deploy source to org. So if you're used to using Maven's Mate or Force IDE, once you try to save, it tries to deploy it. So there's a setting for that on DX. So go to Code, Preference, and Settings, and search for Salesforce. Uh, sales under Workspace. And you could do it for the user, or you could do it per project. So I'm just doing it for this project. So if I go here, um, Scroll a little bit down. Let's search push. I 
Salesforce feature. So this is the settings that you want to enable. Salesforce DX VS Code push or deploy on save. So you click on tick on that to enable it and then close it. You can verify those settings by going on this VX code if you don't if you have hidden files disabled. So you could click on the settings and you would see that that's enabled. So um, let's quickly go to the org first and check that my deployment actually worked. So um, it's on the so it's utility. Open this, and you would see that my comment is there. So I'm gonna just gonna update it. Uh, enable auto save. Uh, I mean auto deploy, and hit save. As you can see, as immediately as I save, it tries to deploy it. So very handy to enable that feature. And if you go back and refresh, and then it should have my changes. So that's how easy to get started um, using the org um, development model. So this function for source and deploy is just used for developing against sand, um, sandbox or de or when it's time to deploy to production uh, you would need to use a different um, command which is the mda api or the metadata deploy because this one is non-transactional like if there's an error it would only deploy the file that hit an error it won't roll back anything if you try to use this to deploy in production so it's not recommended so but on the, we'll tackle that video on a future tutorial so now we have this um, file, um, structure that we could work on uh, you would like to probably uh, put version control here so there's a git ignore file that's already created so um, let me open that terminal as I git uh, steps so there's no um, uh, repository for this one but uh, when you created the uh, project it added a git ignore file for you automatically so to create this as a uh, repository just go to git init and then it would start uh, tracking all those changes so any changes here on the git ignore would be um, not committed so I also don't want to commit the SFDX, uh, the VX code extension. So I'm just going to add VX code here as well. And that should be it. And then um, let's try going to GitHub. So I'm going to push this code to GitHub. And then on the future tutorial, we're going to automate some of the stuff for um, um, like uh, pipelines, uh, which is github actions here so i'm going to call this youtube salesforce salesforce dx yep and create this and i'm going to add this as a remote go back to dx and finally push this um, first i need to commit it so i'm going to git add git commit and say initial uh, commit and git push and that's it so if I refresh here you would see that we now have a working um, Salesforce DX uh, repository so hope you like this video. Stay tuned for more. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.